I guess I came by way of my father. He was always into Datsuns, racing them just on an amateur level. We came by the car when I was just before I turned 15, my dad did a TV show with the former owner, Tom Nachu, for Speed TV. He had wanted to do a father-son project, and this car came up and it ended up being my 16th birthday present. It was originally set up to be a vintage endurance race car, and um, at the time he had a close friend named Jeff Cube who kind of steered him away from getting me into a Z, which my dad had at the time and uh, we picked up this 510. I was, I was actually pissed at the time. I wanted a Z badly instead of this. But I could never be disappointed about a, a, a vehicle present from my parents. It's ridiculous. As I learned more about them, I, I definitely came to love the car. Uh, just its its history and everything. They're kind of giant killers. I mean, it, I like the idea of something doing something it shouldn't. The Z was a sports car. It was supposed to be fast. This was something to go get groceries in. And these cars romped on all sorts of heavy machinery in the Trans Am series in the 70s. And that's what I'm hoping it can still do. <laughs> the story behind this car's change has been crazy. The car was never a street car, it was a race car its whole life. It still has most of its original sheet metal uh, and parts from when it was last a race car, which would have been in the early 80s. <laughs> it doesn't feel stock, but shifting is fucking... I, at the time, could maybe do brakes in an oil change. Uh, I had a big time interest in cars, but didn't have the practical skills. And uh, worked on it quite a bit out in, uh, just outside of Cambridge with my dad's friend, Jeff Cube. He taught me a lot through those years. Um, my dad at the time was rather sick. He had colon cancer at the time. And this was kind of just a way for me to not be at home we lived in the country, I didn't have my driver's license at the time, so it was either stew at home or work on this thing. He, he, he got me out, he taught me so many things, and uh, we worked on the car together. My dad ended up uh, beating cancer and recovering, and we kind of fell away from the car. The car sat for many years. Two years ago, I decided I was going to finish it. In the interim, Jeff Cube had passed, and I was not close with his son Adam at the time. In the last year or so, uh, me and Adam had chatted here and there, and in this summer, we, we chatted quite a bit. He expressed his love for the 510 in general, and I, I said, you know, I would be honored to have you a part of this project, especially finishing it. And he took it from 80% done and not running to running and ready to be finished. There's a number of times I wanted to just take a break from it or whatever, but the desire to drive the car and, and see it through kind of took over. I worked way too hard working to earn the money. I mean, to the detriment of everything, really. <laughs> I mean, personal relationships uh, with my friends and girlfriend and whatever, spending a lot of time working just to to, to afford to build this shit can. That brings us to pretty well where we are now. We're pretty well ready to start funnel assembly and, and testing and everything. And, you know, I, I talk about Adam's help with the car, but I, I couldn't by any means learn all this stuff and be this far with the car without 
the help of everyone who's ever helped me over the past two years with the car. There's so many little details. I mean, it's got things I would probably not be able to afford, like the tilt and pedal setup, Tom put that in, it's insane. And just, I don't know, bes besides the obvious, the engine, the wiring and the paint, I don't know, there's so many random bits and details in this car. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to recap it all. The, the satisfaction of taking something that you built and thought about and put time and effort and money into and, and doing what you intended to do with it. Obviously the competition, I mean, most of the people I hang out with are pretty tenacious in how competitive they are. Just seeing what you can do, putting yourself up against people, like-minded people who are out there to beat you and, and ideally busting them. <laughs> I think the, the engine swap is the main, the main thing people are drawn to, put the S2000 motor in it. It's simple, it's stock, it makes good power, it's lightweight, it's packaged well, it fits in there extremely well. And if I break it, it's simple to go get another stock one and put it in. It came to around 1,900 pounds, and it should be between 240 and 250 horsepower. The showstopper will probably be me putting it into the wall at some point in its life. Um, When my dad was sick, I was not openly upset, but kind of, well, bummed. I mean, it's your dad. So I would think about this car a lot, and yeah, I didn't know everything there, I know now at the time, but I, I spent a lot of time just, you know, daydreaming, if you will, about racing. For the second race in a row, Dotson's backup car came into play. Mike Downs led Quack during the early going. That was, you know, 10 years ago. So now, the other day, uh, I took it for a little uh, drive on the road, and it was it, it was pretty surreal. Mm -hmm.